Hello, today we're going to be working on uh, the McCall's pattern number 7342. We're going to make this cute little hat. Um, I've already laid out all the pattern pieces, cut all the pattern pieces out of fabric, followed the instructions as to how, how to cut them on the fold and various things like that. So I'm already past that step. So I've got all my pieces cut and I'm ready to start interfacing them. So you'll see as I unpin these, I've got the, I like to think of it as the, the collar of the hat, the brim of the hat, the part that goes right there on the child. There are two pieces. They were cut on the fold. So it makes a very large circle is what happens here when you open one of them up. Not exactly, but it's going to make a very large circle once you sew the insides in. Okay, so there's two of those. The instructions on the pattern told you to cut two of those and one on the inter one interfacing. The same on the fold. So I've got that ready to go. So we'll be ironing those in just a moment. And I've got my three pattern pieces, three other pattern pieces, which to me look all the same. I think they just did it that way to keep the instructions in the manual or in the book um, a little more simple so that you sew 14 to 15, 15 to 16, rather than sewing the first one to the second one to the third one. <laughs> you know. Anyway, we're gonna get through this. So this, these said to cut four pattern pieces. So for each piece, I have four. And it also said to cut two pattern, two interfacings. So none of this is on the fold, and these are straight up grain cuts, long line through them. So, and I'm dealing with, in this fabric, since I chose to do two different colors on the hat, I'm doing a print that requires me to place it the right direction. This will be the top of the hat when we're finished, and this will be, this will adjoin that brim piece that you saw earlier. So you'll need to, if you're cutting something that has a print, you don't want it going upside down. That wouldn't look too good. So um, I've made sure to line all that up and cut all that. So I'm gonna unpin all these and I will set up and start ironing the interfacing. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna bond our interfacing to our pattern piece. You're gonna do this six times. You're gonna lay that interfacing. Now the interfacing has two sides. One's got little bumps on it or it'll be shiny. All interfacing is different. Read your package directions, follow them. But for this one, I've got little bumps that I know you won't be able to see, but they, they're just tiny little bumps and that's your glue or adhesive. You're gonna put it face side to the fabric, bump side to the fabric with your pretty side of the fabric down, okay? So you're on the wrong side of your fabric and you're putting the bumpy side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric, okay? Then the most important thing is to use a press cloth because the no matter how careful you are with your cutting, your the glue has a way of seeping out sometimes, any kind of fusible, especially with Wonder Under or something like that. This is just regular interfacing, but I've just always learned to use press cloth. And that way I don't get adhesive all over my iron or my ironing board, okay? So for this, um, I'm standing on my cord, sorry about that. Uh, for this interfacing, I need to hold this for 10 seconds with a medium heat iron. So I'm gonna lay this right on it. This pattern, Miracle of Miracles fits right underneath my iron. Most of the time, the instructions will say don't move the iron. You just hold it there for 10 seconds. And I've, once the 10 seconds has elapsed, I'm gonna pick it up. It's gonna be really hot, but I am gonna check to see if it's bonded. I'll take a, a place and see if I can pull it. Ooh, I pulled it. So it's not really bonded well yet. So I need to hold that just a little bit longer. Okay. 
I might not actually have counted 10 seconds. And that steam will help too. Uh, some, some instructions will say steam, some will say not. Anytime you're pressing anything to bond it together, make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions for the product you're using. If you're familiar with one type and you switch to another, the instructions are often very different. Okay? All right, that should be bonded. I'm gonna pick that up. Let's try that again. And this time, I cannot get it apart. So that's good, that's great. All right, I did forget to mention one thing earlier. Um, when you're cutting out your pattern, laying out your pattern, um, the top of the hat pieces have the little rings that you should be marking and clipping your little notches on a seam this small i really don't find it necessary to clip the notches especially on a hat it's just but this little part up here this little dot and it's really hard to see that mccall's could do us all a favor by making these lines a little darker just my thoughts on it um they've gotten lighter over the years let me tell you when i learned to sew my mother would teach me to take a needle and thread and run a piece of thread through there okay i didn't like that method so as soon as all the different marking pins and stuff that you could use to mark dots and notches and stuff like that came along i tried all of them but on black fabric it's hard to get anything to mark so the best thing I found on this fabric is this little tiny piece slither of white Taylor's chalk. You could use chalk out of the kid's chalk box too if you need to, but I'm gonna mark it where it doesn't matter down here, but you'll see I get a good, pretty decent line there with that. Where some of these other methods, I can't even see it. I got a little bit with the blue one. The reason that this mark is important whatever color, however you want to do it, it's important. Because what it is doing is when you sew this piece, you're gonna sew up here to this line, okay? You're only gonna sew to right there. You're gonna stop. Because the top part of these three pieces needs to float a little bit to be able to put everything together, okay? So it's really important that you stop sewing at that point, which is, the pattern tells you, a quarter of an inch from the end of the seam. So that's the other way you can do it. If you just wanna put a pin there and make sure that you stop at the pin, that'll work too. This is just the way I'm gonna do it, I marked it. And I'm gonna start sewing from the other end, okay? But before I sew anything, I need two pieces pinned together and marked. So here we go. I'm just going to use a couple of pins because I found that these pieces don't really want to move, especially with the interfacing on them. All right, now I'll show you, I'll open this up, show you, you're sewing with the interfacing out. So if you mark that pattern with your dot on the inside, you won't be able to see that unless you transfer it to the interfacing, if you're using a darker interfacing like I am. So that's what it should look like. You should have the right sides together, okay, and you're going to sew on the wrong sides, which is where the interfacing is, okay? And this pattern is a little different than most other sewing patterns. You're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It tells you that specifically in the instructions. Most patterns won't tell you a seam allowance. It's just assumed that you use a 5 8 And I'm gonna show you on this ruler the difference. 5 eighths is right here at this little dot. A quarter is all the way over here. So you just really want a little tiny seam. 5 eighths is here, and that's the quarter. So this is a very narrow seam, so you wanna make sure your pieces are lined up really well and stitch this seam. approaching the end and remember I want to stop a quarter away so this is one of those times where you don't want to back stitch and overshoot you you want to make sure that you back up off that and do your back stitching so you don't have a lot of bulk up at the very tip top of the hat 
So now I'm stopping them at a quarter of an inch. And now I'm backstitch. Okay. I'll hold this up to cut it and let you see what that looked like. So I stopped before I ever got to the edge of the fabric, which is rather unusual. Okay. Trim my other threads. Now this next step in the instructions is to pin the other piece. This is 14 and 15. We're gonna pin 16 to this one. And see, that's what happens when you leave that. See how the top is not sewn for a quarter an inch right there at the top, okay? But that's, you're starting to see what the little hat will look like once it's all stitched together, okay? So we're gonna open this up now a little bit. And for a lot of patterns, it would tell you to press that seam right now. This one doesn't. Good practice is just to go ahead and press that seam open you know, just take it to your iron board, run your finger down through it, open it up, sort of lay flat. I'll do that in the iron board in a few minutes just because I'm a quilter and that's the best way to get a seam to lay flat. So go ahead and press it before you stitch another seam across it. So anyway, now, right now, we're going to sew this other seam. This seam doesn't cross it because again, you're stopping a quarter of an inch from the edge. So let me get this pinned and I'll stitch this and you'll see what half of the hat looks like. Okay, again, I'm gonna stitch from the bottom up to the top. I didn't have that lined up very well, so I'm gonna repin that. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the bottom I'm going to stitch with that same quarter of an inch. Pull the pin and I'm approaching the dot. I'll go all the way up to where I sewed before and then I'm going to back up. threads and that's how that meets at the top so on the inside they're all three loose that'll help when we lay this to attach the next piece we'll just get rid of a lot of that bulk up there in the top okay so I'm gonna trim these threads before I move on and I personally I'm gonna take this to the iron board and iron this before I do the next step Okay, just gotten back from the ironing board where I've pressed the seams open. That's why you can see the red. And I've turned the little hat, the half a hat. This is just one side, right side out. Okay, so that's what your three little pieces should look like sewn together. Okay, you're gonna do the same thing again for the other side. Okay, all so the pieces all together the same, just like we did the first one. And you'll have two of these little guys. So now is the fun part. We're going to match them and we're going to pin them together to sew them together. The best way to do this is to take one straight pin, go through that spot at the top on the middle piece, dig down to where you find the middle piece, right where those threads come together, put a pin through there, okay, on one side only. Doesn't matter which side, just put a pin through there, okay? So it's right where the threads came together and where we've left those little tails open, I've got a straight pin through there and I probably could have used a bigger one so you could see it better, sorry about that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the straight pin and stick it right through the same point on the other side. So right at the top there, through the point, going into that middle piece, okay? What that does is it lines up those two pieces. This is a technique you use in quilting a lot. You will pin through one side into the seam that you're going into just to line those seams up and to lock, it kind of locks them together. So we're gonna leave that pin in there until we get up there to sew that part. 
But for right now, we're going to pin the rest of this. So we're going to start right there beside it and line up all our edges and go down. Okay, so there's a pin there. And then here, line up these edges and put another pin. I think I'm going to put a third pin on this side just because I've got a little more wobble there, it seemed like. All right, so that pin is still in there in the center. I'm going to move down a couple of inches, put another pin. Okay. Down a little further, line up the bottom. Make sure both edges are at the even at the bottom. Okay. And then again, I'm going to put a little pin in the middle because if you'll see, I've got just a little bit overlap in there. You don't want that. You want the edges right matched together. Okay. So I'm going to put a pin right there. Now, this time when we sew, we're going to start on one side, doesn't matter which, doesn't matter, you know, whichever side we start on. We're going to go all the way around this through that little spot right there. And that's thick. That's got all those little pieces laying in there, okay? The reason I press this flat is that kind of helps with it, but you're still going to have some bulk there, okay? You're going to continue on through there. Don't stop like you've been doing. When you get close, pull out the pin, just stitch on across it. And then we're going to go all the way down to the other end of this. Now you could stop there and come down here and stitch back up just like you did the others. There's really no point. Okay, so I'm going to set this for you. My pedal moved. to the point where I need to pull that pin out. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to pull it completely out. I'm just going to flip it to the side for right now until I get right up to it, and then I'll pull it out. Try to lay those seams down to where that will sew over that flap as flat as possible. Okay, I'll pull the pin. I'm going to keep going on around there. Hear that change where it went through that thicker, thicker fabric? That's normal. Got a little misalignment there, so I'm going to tweak that and make sure that lines back up good. That's good. All right, back stitch to the end. And the top of the hat is complete through this step. Okay, I'm going to trim those threads. All right, so now what you've got is the two sides together. Open them up. And there's the little top of the hat. And if you did it well, there's no hole in the top of it. If you didn't do it exactly right, there's a hole in the top of it. And if you did it way better than I did it, your seams are perfectly matched there. Mine are pretty close, but they're still a little bit off. It's very difficult to get that exactly right. And yeah, if you're a perfectionist, you can take it back apart and line it back up a little bit better. But as quick as the little child is going to grow out of this hat, I think it'll be fine. Besides, if you look at ready to wear lately, that seam wouldn't be nearly that close. All right. After this, we're going to move on to the brim. So I'll get that set. Okay, we've got our brim sections and we're ready to go on it. So the instructions on it, item number four, says to pin the brim together, stitch brim together at center back. I knew I, knew I said that wrong, but I couldn't figure out what I said wrong. So I'm just going to pin it first before we stitch that little short seam. And that is the center back because it makes a circle. So. That's that little spot right there. So I'm going to pin that and we'll stitch that. Now this time it doesn't tell you to stitch with a quarter of an inch. 
And when you looked on the, I, I checked the pattern just to make sure, and it did have the stitching line at five eighths for the rest of the pattern. So we're gonna stitch this at five eighths like we normally would sew at. So I'm gonna move everything back to where I can do that. Okay, that one's stitched. Now we're gonna stitch the lining side of the brim. Same deal, I've already got it pinned. I didn't pull that one out. I'm gonna chain stitch these two together, save a little thread and time. Lift the presser bar, put it back down where I'm gonna stitch. Okay, those two pieces are sewn for that back seam. By stitching them together and not cutting each one in between, it saves a little bit of thread, not a lot, and thread's pretty cheap, but when you're quilting, that's the way you do things, and I just have a habit of doing that, so. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got our hat brim stitched together, okay? So now, I'm gonna take this seam that we just sewed there, I'm gonna open it up with my fingers, okay? I'll take my fingernail and run down it. You have these built-in little irons on your hand, if you didn't know it, but it'll just kinda help flatten that seam. If you wanna take it to the iron and flatten that seam, it'll help, but it, Sometimes just a little finger press will be enough to get you by for the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Open this one up. This is the lining piece that we just stitched. Okay. Again, we put those together, right sides together before we sewed. On this broadcloth fabric, it's diff difficult to tell which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So it doesn't really matter. But if you follow your, if you keep your pattern piece pinned on it until you're ready to sew it, you'll know which is the right and the wrong side. All right, and the next step is to line these two up on each other. <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly the way they say it, but all right, here we go. Uh, turn right side out and press, then baste the raw edges together. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put these together at the seams. So you're going to take the two seams and match them together. Let's see if I can do this like this so that you can see what I'm doing there. You can use the same technique that we just used where you put a pin through the seam, but I think this will do us just fine. Just seat them there beside each other. I usually do put the pin in, well, hold it up to where you can see it, sorry about that. I usually put the pin right in the seam so that it just kind of holds everything together there. Then you're gonna go around this and pin these together. And this, you're probably gonna need to pin every two to three inches just because you're working on a curve and you want this to line up really, really well. Again, make sure you've got right sides together before you start here. And right sides together usually means you've got your seams facing you. If you're seeing your seams, you've probably got the right sides together. Just keep working all the way around it until you've got it pinned all the way around. Like just a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to the, the starting point and work this one now for a little bit. Okay. All right, one more pin right there, and it's laid out really nice and flat. We don't have any bulk or any extra. It's a good sign that you got your seam allowances right. Okay. Now the next step is to base this, and. If you're not familiar with basting something like this, you're gonna take a needle and thread and sew with a single thread if you can, if you know how to do that. If not, two threads, not your thread, sew with two threads is fine. But you just want to hold this together really well so that you can sew it, okay? Um, me, 
I would just throw it on sewing machine and sew it just like it is right now because it's not gonna shift that much, but the thing says to baste it, so. But anyway, when you do baste, make sure that you don't baste at your 5 8 inch seam allowance because it's hard to pick those threads back out if they show. So you're gonna wanna stitch about 3 8 of an inch or a quarter inch in. So for right now, I'm going to machine baste this. And to machine baste, I'm going to loosen my stitch up really wide and I'm gonna do the same thing, run that stitch all the way around at about a quarter of an inch. mistake and backstitched at the beginning of this. If you're basting, you really don't want to backstitch because you do want to be able to pull this thread back out if something didn't meet up. So I'm not going to backstitch this time. I'm just going to stitch back up to where I started. Okay. Trim my threads and I'll show you what we've got. Okay. So what I did was I just Stitch that all the way around, and you'll see my seam allowance is a little uneven because it really doesn't matter on a baste. This is something you can do in front of the TV or something at night. Just baste that up, okay? That's going to help it not move on you when you actually do your stitching. Now, I didn't feel like this move wanted to move, but if you're working with a really slippery fabric, basting is essential. Um, also, anything that's got a ripple to it, like a corduroy or something like that, it's going to move, especially on a curve and all that. So, now I'm going to adjust my stitch length again and set it back up for the regular sewing. And we're going to sew this for real. This is a 5 8 of an inch seam. And I will backstitch this time. I, and I like to start wherever the seam is. Um, it's just a preference thing. You could start this anywhere. Doesn't really matter, but any extra bulk from the back space, your back stitching will wind up on that seam rather than in the middle of a little spot right here on the side or something. Yeah. Okay. There we go, got that stitched all the way around. All right, all right. so our next instruction is to trim this seam, and then we're gonna turn this brim inside out and press it. So when they say trim the seam, what you're trying to do is eliminate the extra bulk. So let me find a better spot. So like right here, we're gonna take this and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you trim it's, it's, this is all ballpark, but you don't want to get so close to your stitching that your stitching unravels over time. So depending on your fabric makes a big difference. If you've got something really ravelly, this is a broadcloth, so it's not real bad to ravel, but we are working on a curve and a curve will ravel a little more than just a straight edge wheel. So I'm gonna go maybe three eighths inch in not a full half. A lot of times you would trim a 5 8 seam to a half. I'm not gonna do that much. I'm gonna just trim it kinda like this. And that's kinda really close to where I stay stitched it. 
okay? So I will do this, and then we'll come back and I'll turn it for you. Okay, I've trimmed that all the way around, got the little shreds off of it. We'll throw those away later, all right? Now we're gonna turn this. So you're just gonna open the two sides up, okay? And work that all the way around. So you've got it completely turned out. Now the next step is to take it and press it. And as a quilter, I probably would have pressed it before I ever turned it because it helps the seams lay a little flatter, but that's not what the instructions said. So there's your brim of your little hat. So uh, I will take this machine now and iron it, press it. But then the next step is gonna be something called stay stitching. So when we come back, I'll show you how that's done and explain exactly what that is to you. All right, we are set up and ready to stay stitch this brim. Like I said, we're gonna stay stitch at about 3 8 of an inch. Now I'm gonna do something different. I do have a piece on my machine that'll slide off to make the throat neck of my machine smaller, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna show you a trick. Just put this in the other direction because you're gonna use a stay stitch at about 3 8 Now you just used a quarter inch while ago, so it's slightly more than that, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This seam is gonna be hidden when you get done. So I'm not gonna worry so much about stitching it where the seam, where I can see the seam allowance. I'll try to move that up so you can see. You can see I've set down my foot right at the edge of that. This foot, like this, will give me right about 3 eighths. It's slightly less, but and my needle position is in the center. If I wanted exactly three eighths, I can move my needle position over a little bit and get that. But this is just, the stay stitching is just to keep this from stretching out too much while you attach it to the, the top of the hat. So just kind of holds it in place. So here we go. You'll notice I didn't use any pins doing that. You can. If you feel like you need to, please do. I realized about halfway around that I had not used pins. It was laying very flat and the pieces were very close together. So I could tell that the alignment was good. So that's why I didn't pin it. All right, so we're gonna trim our threads and move on to the fun part. All right, so now we've got our hat brim and you'll have to feel of it to know which is the top and which is the bottom. You can kind of separate the pieces, the piece with that feels thinnest is your bottom. The piece that's interfaced is the top, just like the hat. You, we've only sewn the interfaced pieces so far, so that's the top of the hat. Now we're going to put these two together. Pull the hat through that, okay, or the, the top, and I'm going to match one of the seams. This pattern's a little unusual in that it didn't give you dots or markings of any kind to match the rest of the seams. But I made some marks just to um, help myself out. Yeah, because it can be a little um, intimidating. So right here is my other halfway round mark. And I'm just going to pin that halfway around. You can see how that's lining up inside there, okay? Then I've made another mark right there, and that may not be exactly right, but it's pretty close. What I did was just folded the pattern in three and got a place for my mark. What you're gonna see here, this is a really good example, there's a little more fabric on the bottom layer than there is on the top. See how taut the tidy top is? There's a little more fabric there. So this is gonna take a little pulling and a little more pinning to get this to go through the machine and lay flat. So we're gonna have to be careful with that. This might be a good instance, let's pin this side first, but this might be a really good situation where we want to base this before we machine sew it. 
Let's pin it all up and see what it looks like. All right, that side lay down flat. Let me see if yeah, this side over here laid down pretty flat, so perhaps we'll be okay with that. I believe I will hand baste this. I'm also going to clip down to the stay stitching in a couple of places just to give this a little more ease to where that'll go together a little better. I think this is one of those cases where they told us to sew it with quarter inch seams, but they didn't allow for that when they cut the length of the brim. So the brim is a little too small. But I don't want a lot of puckering joining the hat together. You could ease the hat into it, but I'd rather ease the brim to the hat. So that's what I'm going to try to do with the clips and by pre-basting it. So I'll do that by hand and I'll be right back. All right, when I left you last, I was going to take the little hat and baste the brim onto the cap of the hat um, because I was having trouble getting it to lay out flat and be able to sew it on the machine without having a lot of puckers and I actually sewed it on there once and I had too many puckers so I took it back off I've clipped the curves a little bit and now basted it on there and I'm gonna show you I just did a big long running basting stitch just to kind of hold that on there okay sorry about that hold that on there in the right place then on the inside you'll see those two pins I'm gonna sew this with the inside of the hat down against my feed dogs. That's gonna help it feed through there a little bit more on the bottom than on the top, hopefully. But I also, the reason I pinned that right there with two pins like that is I want those seams to lay flat. You don't want a lot of bulk right at one spot. And if you flip those seams over, to where they're both going the same direction, you'll wind up with more bulk there than doing it this way. Some places I thought and basted it, I caught it, I didn't think. I actually basted it to where it'll hold it flat without thinking about it. I really didn't realize I should have done that until I got to the end. So anyway, all right, so we're gonna sew this now. All right, so now I'm gonna sew this little hat. Set this up at five eighths and away we go. I'm going to be real careful to take my time and finesse the fabric to where it's laying flat in front of the foot every time I start sewing. And I'll have to, I'll wind up stopping several times to finesse it to get this nice and flat. first place where I had two pins. So I'm going to pull the first one, but leave the second one. Stitch right up to the second one, and then I'll pull it. Got a big bubble right there, so I've got to work hard to get that down flat. If you do have to, I'm being very careful not to pull this out from underneath the needle when I do flatten these out, but if you're worried about your needle dislodging its place, if your machine has the option to stop the sewing with the needle down, this is a great time to use it. Mine doesn't. I can put the needle down just by rolling the presser I mean the um, wheel, but I just have been doing this so long that I just do it without doing that sometimes. <laughs>
back around. All right, so I'm gonna raise my needle up and raise the presser bar, get my threads out. Again, I'm gonna trim my threads as soon as I finish sewing. And I had a random thread over here I need to trim as well. All right, so now we, you see there, we've stitched that at 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. So when you turn that, you can start to see the little hat starting to take shape, okay? All right, I just sewn the brim onto the hat and then I've turned it right side out. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. My seam doesn't meet exactly. Now, ideally you want that to meet exactly. I didn't put my pins right or I pulled a little too hard on the top, not the bottom or something, it, it can happen. If you really wanna get this perfect, go back in here, pull those stitches out. In this case, I may have had it basted wrong to begin with. That may be what led to it, because right there's where I started basting, so it should have lined up right. I did this last night in front of the TV, so perhaps I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have. But this is the time to check your little hat and make sure you don't have anything that you wanna fix. Right now is the time to fix anything. If you've got a bubble, an extra pocket of fabric folded in here, or something just doesn't look right, now's the time you could take it back apart and fix anything. I thought I had one little spot that had just a little, right here, I've got just a little X, I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see that. There's just a little bit of excess fabric right there. It is so small that I would not do anything about that. Matter of fact, the iron may make that go away when I hit this with it, so. But if you had a big bad spot, because like I said, this brim and the hat didn't exactly line up right according to the pattern. So I suspect if you make this, you may have the same kind of problems I did. All right, so now we're ready to do the lining of the hat. See, it's got all that interfacing in there. Lots of times I'm ready to wear, you will see that lined like that, but they'll finish this um, unlined like this, but they'll finish this edge off with a piece of ribbon or cording or um, vise tape to cover that raw edge. But this hat has two layers, so it's completely lined. And what we'll do is we'll just make this seam go away in the lining. We'll just hide it all, okay? So the lining is made the exact same way as the top of the hat. You had six pieces left. You should have had six pieces left from the top of your hat and they don't have interfacing on them. So these are the pieces you're gonna use. Again, they're marked with that quarter inch at the end of the seam, so you don't wanna sew past that. The only difference in doing this side, inside of the hat is you've got to leave an opening in one of these sections for you to turn the hat with. And I'll show you all that as we get to that point, but you've got to leave an opening. And I have not made this hat before, so I have a rather large hand. And for me, I like to be able to get at least four fingers and sometimes my whole fist into whatever I'm turning to be able to pull the thing out through it. It's a personal preference thing, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that opening on this first one <laughs> so that I don't forget to do it because I know myself and I know that I will get this thing completely sewn up and have to rip out a seam because I forgot to do this. So I'm gonna put my two pins in where I want my opening. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew, just like I would sew the whole seam, I'm gonna sew from right here to this first pin Backstitch. Here you want to backstitch real good because you are going to be pulling the hat through this opening. Then I'm going to start again here and backstitch and again sew up to that dot. So we're just leaving a gap in the seam to be able to turn the hat through. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm at the pin. I'm going to backstitch. 
You could do that with a pen or you could mark it, whatever works for you. All right, I'm gonna pull the piece out and clip the threads and then I'll start sewing again at the second piece. And I'm gonna set the presser foot down on here. And again, these are sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. So make sure you don't get carried away and sew at five eighths. But I set the presser foot down right where the pin was. So I'm just gonna start sewing there. And I went ahead and pulled the pin out so that I don't sew over the pin. All right, I'm sewing up to the dot now. One more stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to back stitch that. So that's a very short little seam, probably an inch, inch and a half long. Like I said, you've got to pull the hat back through this hole. So if I can get my hand through the hole, my hand's probably bigger than that size, of that, that little bit of hat. So I've got a couple more strings to trim. All right, so here's what we've got. There's a hole right there. And that's what we're going to pull the hat through. And honestly, you could test that right now to make sure that's big enough. Let's see, I think we'll be able to get it because you just keep working it till you get it through that hole. So, all right. If you leave it much bigger than that, you don't have you don't have much there of a seam to even sew. But this is required that you do it this way. It just makes it easier to attach the brim. That's what they're doing. They're saving you. A really complicated stitching technique if you don't do it this way this will make it easier so all right so now what we're going to do that was 14 to 15 so now we're going to join 16. we don't need the hole anymore we just need to join the piece you only need the hole in one spot so we'll do just as we did before on the top we'll pin these fabrics face this together right sides together all right. and line them up get them all even okay we use one more pin all right again i'm going to start at the bottom and sew up to the dot and i'll stop when i get to the dot again at a quarter of an inch seam too early. All right, one more stitch. All right, now I'm going to back stitch. Okay. All right, so that is the, either the right or the left side, whichever you want it to be, of the hat. So you've got the three pieces sewn together, and one has a great big hole in it. Okay. Now, we are going to take this half of the hat and sew it to the other half of the hat that I just did, okay? Um, you do three pieces sewn together, just like you did in the very beginning. So there's this one with the hole, and then there's the other half that I did ahead of time, to save some time, just the three pieces sewn together, just like we did in the beginning. So I've already pressed this one open, so that'll help us with lining up our seams and laying everything out a little bit okay so this time I'm gonna show you pinning this a little bit better maybe so the way to get these to line up at the top is to take your pin and put it through right there where the two you've got your you've got a seam coming up here and you've got your seam coming up here and here you want to put that pin right at the very top of it and poke it through so let me poke that through and I'll show it to you so this is through one layer only Okay, got the other layer in my hand, but I'm only going through that top layer of that hat right at the very point where we stop sewing. Okay, and on this side, it looks like that, where we stop sewing. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the exact same spot on the other side, flatten that seam out a little bit, and put that pin through there to where it comes out at the exact same spot right in the center 
of those two seams, okay? So we're gonna leave that pin in there straight, just like that. We'll pin down the sides, just like we did on the other one. And we're gonna sew all the way down through here. We're gonna start on one side and go all the way around, I should say. Go ahead and pin this up to it. So I'm gonna go back to the top and start pinning down the other, and start pinning down the other side. Got that? So there's our first pin. Line those up to both sides. My pins wanna fight with me today. All right, there we go. So I've got this pinned, and again, we're gonna take it and start on one side and stitch all the way around the seam. Then we're gonna stitch over the center seam, and as I get there, I'm gonna flatten the seam and go across it just like we did. I've ironed this one, but this one over here hadn't been ironed yet, so I'll just finger flatten that right now, and so that that will alleviate some of that bulk in that joint. But it will, it'll kind of bog down the machine a little bit when you go through one of those bulky joints. You'll be able to hear it. All right, again, quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm approaching the top. And as I do, I think I can move that anyway to where you can see that better. I'm going to pull that pin out as I get to the top. So let me lay this seam back down. I'm going to pull that pin straight out. Okay. Ease on through there. with a pin to line the seams up is not something you do a lot in clothing sewing. You will do it some in, you can't, you, there's lots of places you can use it, but the pattern just doesn't tell you to do that. Um, it's just an old quilter's tip that I learned a long time ago. Um, Cause you, you do need your seams to line up exactly in quilting or else your patterns don't come together properly. And speaking of seams lining up exactly, I did get the seams lined up exactly, but it looks like when I got to the top of the hat, I took a little bit bigger seam allowance than I should have. I don't have points there like I do on this one. I have wedges. <laughs> Show you my points. So I made pretty good points yesterday with that. I believe I'll take the seam ripper and loosen this back up here and stitch back over this again. I was fighting with that pin sticking up and I didn't get that exactly right. Yeah, look, that seam allowance is way wider than a quarter of an inch. It's more like three eighths. So I will take the seam allowance, seam ripper, and remove the stitching from about right here to right here, which is where it's bad. And then I'll sew it again, okay? So if you've never used a seam ripper, it's a great little tool. You just get the seam ripper under a thread and pop that, cut that thread through. And you do that about every three threads, every three <laughs> threads. And on one side, you do that. On the other side, the thread will come loose then because you've cut this in so many places. One place I don't have it cut, it's right there. Yeah. Then on the other side, I like to just run, run underneath there, but I'm not trying to cut it this time. I'm just trying to pull it. So I'll just pull that thread up out of the way and it'll just kind of unravel that. And you'll see when I open this up, 
the hat is open again. So there's a hole all the way through. Okay. All right, so I'm going to repin this and try again. And I think I will take it to the ironing board because I think that's part of my problem. I didn't have my seams flat before I started. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back when I'm ready to sew. All right, the ironing of the seams seems to have helped a lot. And I also realized what I had done wrong in the seam being the wrong size. On this machine, with the presser foot I was using, I have to shift my needle over a little bit to make it a quarter of an inch, and I forgot to do that. So all those seams that I had sewn were a little bit wider than they should have been. This is the lining, and we already know that the brim is a little smaller than this part of the hat on this particular pattern. So the fact that this is a little bit smaller than it should be because I used a bigger seam allowance, it's not gonna hurt us in this case, but ordinarily, if I'd done something like that, I'd probably wind up having to take these back out, all these seams, and stitch them again at the one quarter inch. It's just the three I just did, because the ones I did yesterday, I had done right. So I'd stitched half of this yesterday, just to be ahead for today. So it's this, these two I did right here that are so wide. So anyway, we're gonna leave them. I don't think anyone will, Ever know the difference. But for right now, I've got this pin. I did the same pin technique where I poke it straight through on both sides, just like I showed you. And I'm just gonna stitch between where I pulled that stitching out, between there and there. And I'm gonna back stitch as I start to lock all the stitches in place. Start and stop. So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up on the stitching that's already there. You, if you ever have to take something out, you want to be very careful that you do line up on the stitching you've already got. Even though, as I already know, my stitch is in the wrong place, I'm just going to gradually move over to where I'm supposed to be. So I'll show you that once I sew it. So I'm going to flatten that out and stitch the rest of this. I'm going to pull the pin out of the center. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is to just sew towards the line that's here from the original seam and make sure I land on top of it. And once I do, I'll back stitch. Once I, once I land on top of the seam I'm targeting, I will go a few stitches and then back stitch. That's the way I should have said that, sorry. And I'll do my best to show you all this. Let's see. All right, so I started, this is too wide here. This is much more than a quarter of an inch. No. And I backstitched here, you see that little bit of bulk, okay? And started, and I went down through here, and I just eased it back over to where it's more narrow. Right here's more what your seam allowance should look like, a quarter of an inch, okay? Then I stitched across the point, and you'll see that folded one of those seams over, but that's okay as long as it doesn't make a big wad there, okay? And then I stitched on around, came back to where I ripped that out, and there's another place where I backstitched. I just kind of tapered that back down to where the line was originally. Okay, now let's turn it and see what we got. That's much better on our points. Okay, that's what you want it to look like, something like that. That one is still a little, I may not have that one of those seams sewn right at one quarter of an inch, but this is the lining, so it's really not gonna matter. There's our little hole, you see my thumb coming through. Okay, so turned it wrong side, right side out. All right, this next step is probably the most difficult step in the whole process. We've got our little hat, all cute, okay, but we've gotta line it. So 
what the instructions say to do is to place the hat right sides together over the brim. So over the brim, we're gonna take the brim and we're gonna fold it up all the way around the hat, up on top of the hat where it's kind of goofy looking, okay? Kind of squish that up a little bit. All right, so I've kind of squished the top of the hat down into there. And then we'll take this lining piece and put it over it. I'll do this right up here, okay? Just kind of over it, all right? So I've just covered up the little hat with the lining piece. Now, I'm gonna find my seam in the brim which I should have done before I started. There we go. Okay, oh, that looks worked out well. It is lined up with the hole in the lining. See, there's my thumb, okay. So we're gonna line that seam up with that hole in the brim. Okay, I've pressed them together with my fingers, but now I'm gonna take and pin all the way around this hat, just moving around. Adjust it to where it lines up. Scooch on around. And I am using two pins per panel of hat just to make sure I'm holding it good and taut. Got my finger that time. It's a good thing I'm working on red fabric. <laughs> I don't think I got it enough to bleed, but it's one of the things to be careful of when um, pinning your anything in sewing. You know, you use very sharp objects. I was gonna say one other thing. When when I press my seams open, if you haven't done a lot of that, you do it a lot in quilting. And I'm forever burning the ends of my fingers trying to press my seams open because I try to get too close. So be cautious of that. All right, so as I'm going around, I'm seeing I've got a little bit more hat than I do brim. So I'm just gonna kind of ease that in, just kind of stretch that a little bit. And see that bigger seam allowance actually probably helped us out a little bit because the hat, the top of the hat, had a lot more bulk than the than this did. So I'll put a couple more pins in just to hold that down. And then we'll be ready to sew this. Two more. My pin cushion keeps trying to scoot away from me. So alright, so now we're pinned. Now Again, there's a little bit more bulk on this side up here. So I'm gonna flip this whole thing over and put that down towards the feed dogs as I sew this. And that will help it feed on through a little more evenly. Yeah, I don't exactly want it to feed evenly. A little more unevenly so that it'll ease that in is what I should have said. By turning this to where the lining's on the inside, it also lets you do something else great here. The instructions are gonna say, sew this at a 5 eighths of an inch because it's just a normal seam. But you've already got a seam at 5 eighths of an inch. That's where you sewed the brim on if you're looking at this side of the fabric. This side, no seam, because that hasn't been sewn yet. But in here, you've got that seam at five eighths of an inch already because that's where we attach the brim all the way around. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you sew either on that seam exactly, which is pretty hard to do, or just to this side of it. If you don't, this seam is gonna show when you turn the hat inside out. So make sure you go to the towards the top of the hat, not towards the bottom when you stitch this. So I'm gonna stitch right on top of it or just right to the left as I'm looking at it of the seam that's already there. You don't often get the opportunity to see what you, that seam. So I'm glad that I turned it that way.
again, just taking my time, easing down through there, pulling and tugging the fabric as I need to to get it to lay flat. here that's gotten a little bit hung so I'm just gonna clip that that was from my when I started I didn't pull my thread out far enough to get it clear of the of the presser foot I've got a little bit of a bubble there to work out a little bit of a lump get all that fabric down flat before you sew over it needle in now. I've got another lump here and I need to pull that pin so I'm going to use the needle to hold that in place while I press this all out flat. Okay. I'm also going to give a little tug back here at the back to help that ease in. I let the feed dogs do most of the work. I just give it a gentle tug. If you pull too hard you'll notice your stitch is longer in one spot. It's because you're pulling too hard and you're letting too much fabric through. Right. on around. Again, I've got a little bit of a bulk right there, so I'm going to set that needle down. This is the same I started on, so I'm all the way back around. So now I'm going to back stitch. All right, and here comes the magic. I'm going to trim all these threads. This is the last chance you get, hopefully, to do any type of trimming or fixing. So before we turn this, we're going to turn and look on this side of it and make sure that we don't have any bubbles caught in that seam. No lumps or bumps. All the way around. Caught that seam right there, that um, seam allowance in there a little bit, but that'll be okay. Caught this one, folded it completely over. Sometimes pressing helps and sometimes it just, <laughs> the fabric don't want to stay where you want it to stay. All right, so I'm going to turn this the other way just to make this a little bit easier to see what I'm going to do here. Okay, reach my hand into the hole right here in this little wedge. I'm going to grab the very tip, this part right here, of the hat that's inside there, okay? And I'm gonna gently, very gently, pushing more on this fabric than pulling, pull this hat through here. All right, so now I've got a piece of the brim. I'm gonna continue just by pulling all the way around until I get all that brim out, and that's pretty much gonna turn the rest of the hat, okay? And then we're gonna turn this lining and get it off of. So that's what you got right now. You've got the hat and the brim in the middle and it looks like this. Okay? So now what we're going to do is tuff that all back up in there and that's going to be your cute little hat. But we've still got a hole in it, remember? So we're going to need to close this up. So what you're going to want to do is just take this to the ironing board and press this under for your seam allowance. And you can tell what your seam allowance is gonna be right there because you just pull your seam down to where it lines up, take your thumbnail, kind of crease that fabric there, then take that to the ironing board and press that, and you'll get a nice, even, lined up seam there. Then you're gonna hand stitch that closed. And I would use a red thread and just whip stitch that closed. If you're used to doing embroidery or anything like that, just any kind of little stitch that you can't see very much, but that will close up that seam, 
be great. You could even do this by the machine, just right on the very edge, but you'll see that seam. So it's better if it's hidden. This is gonna be the inside of the hat. Nobody should ever see it, but if you wash it and it gets turned wrong side out for some reason, you'll see your seam. So think about that. And I'm gonna take this to the iron and press that, and then slip stitch that little seam up, and we'll have us a hat. All right, I'm set up with the iron board. Let me show you what I mean about pressing this little seam so that it uh, lays flat for you and then you can stitch it up. I'm just gonna, I've already finger pressed. Just pull the seam out like that and finger press down it. Then I'm gonna take it and open it up where that finger press, you see it just lays there naturally. Just the thumbnail alone, creasing the fabric on lots of fabrics will really make a, a nice little, it'll help you get by without having to iron everything so much. So I'm just gonna press that down to that part and then come back up to the top and press that as well. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Get that back out to where I can get to it. And finesse it down there to the edge. This one I didn't get as good a finger press on and it's fighting me a little bit. But I'm gonna use my tamer over here to make this fabric do what I want it to do. All right, just give that a good little press. Then I'll set up and we'll slip stitch this closed. Okay. Since this is not a stress point on this garment, I'm gonna slip stitch with the single thread technique just to show you what that is. I've threaded my needle. That's what takes me so long because I can't see that little hole. I'm working with a ginormous needle. Work with whatever size needle you like to use. Most people would use a smaller one for this project, but I want you to be able to see it a little bit. All right, so I've pulled my thread through, but I don't pull it down even like I would normally do. I've left one of them shorter than the other, okay? About four or five inches. Make my knot at the end of just one thread, the long one, okay? Now, I'm going to hide my knot. That's the very first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go down into this seam that I just sewed on the machine, and I'm gonna poke my needle up through right beside that seam. Okay, then I'm gonna go back down in the same hole and I'm gonna push, I'm gonna pull the top of the hat out of my way so that I don't accidentally catch it. That's a very important tip. There's nothing worse than getting a garment slip stitched closed like this and all of a sudden you've caught this, something you didn't mean to catch in that seam. That means you gotta rip it out and start over. All right, so now I'm gonna stick this needle back down through this fabric very close. I'm just gonna catch about three threads. This thread that I'm using to sew matches this fabric quite well. So it's gonna be pretty much invisible there. And I have knotted it up somehow. So let me get that little knot undone. All right, got that out. All right, so just, just two or three little threads there and I'll pull, the, pull that up tight for you. Okay, all right. So that the knot is invisible. It's down inside there and you can't see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to this side and I'm gonna take a little bite right here, right on that fold. There's two or three little threads right there of that fabric. That's all I've got on my needle, okay? Then I'm going to, first off, I'm gonna move my iron. It's so hot and I'm gonna burn myself if I don't. Then to the other side, I'm gonna go up about two or three threads and catch two or three more threads. And this is very difficult to do upside down. Who knew? All right, that's more than I wanted, so I'll back a few of those stitches off. All right, now, so I've caught threads on both sides. I'm gonna pull this tight now, and that will just close that hole up. And what I'll do is I'll just zigzag, zigzag back and forth, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, all the way up through here. Now that, 
maybe slip stitching. I'm not, I don't know for sure that's what I was taught with slip stitching because you just don't ever see it in there. That might not be the right term for it, but it's a good way to close things up. So I'll do that and I'll just set up to press the hat then after I finish that. When I get up to the top, I will again hide my knot. I will go back up into this where I've sewn that seam already poke my needle through and run through through the two or three of those stitches there so that the knot is kind of on the inside. That's the way I do it. You do whatever works for you, whatever you're familiar with. Okay, I'll stitch that all the way up, making sure not to catch anything I didn't mean to catch in that hem. And now that hem, that slip stitch, and that slip stitch is now pretty much invisible. So that seam looks very similar to the other seams. My stitches are a little bigger in that one, obviously, but it's a little thing. If you turn this hat wrong side out accidentally, you wouldn't really notice that that seam looked a little different than the others, okay? We're gonna turn it right side out and we're gonna press it now. Get my iron back up here. Okay, our little hat is finished. I'm ready to give it a good press. I've pressed it as best I could with this little towel I've laid up to try to make a tailor's hand because not everybody needs a tailor's ham. I understand that. And you may not even know what one is. So I decided I would go get mine from upstairs. It looks like a ham. It is uh, got a wool side and a duct side, cotton duct. This is, I've had this 30 years at least. So they may not be making them exactly like this anymore. These are great for ironing over. And I would just match the side to whatever I'm ironing. If this is a cotton fabric, I'll put it on the cotton side. You'll see it just allows you to shape your fabric around it. And for this little top of this hat, you're gonna be able to put that on there and press down these seams and really get a good press on that. Like I said, it's not essential. And you can get close with the wadded up towel. You just keep having to reposition it. If you're gonna do garment sewing, this is essential, um, especially for, it's great for sleeves, setting in sleeves, any place that doesn't lay flat. If you're doing a lot of pillowcases or home decor, stuff like that, you probably don't need a tailor's ham. But if you're doing clothes, especially for small children, a tailor's ham is great. All right, there's our little hat. Now this one, um, the brim can either be flipped down like that or flipped up. You could also, um, let's say that your seam didn't meet great up here at the top. You didn't like the way that looked. You can always put a button up there or a little um, iron-on little iron -on or sew-on applique. Since we've got little flowers on here, you could put a little flower up there. You could also just put a piece, you know, a little bit of lace or something up there. Um, you could also add whatever you put up there around this brim. I chose to do two separate fabrics. You could do seven separate fabrics. You've got seven pieces there. You could do rainbow or team colors or anything like that. You could also add lace or trim or decorative stitching to the brim. The brim gives you a lot of opportunity to put the child's, if you've got an embroidery machine or know somebody who does, put the child's name on the hat. Might be very helpful. Okay. We just finished our cute little hat, McCall's 7342. Now, in this hat, I chose not to do the bow because I was using two different fabrics. And honestly, I couldn't decide what to make the bow. So, I left it off. But I've done another hat in this fabric, and I am gonna make the bow. And I'm gonna walk you all the way through the steps from opening the pattern cutting the pieces, and making the bow. So the pattern's gonna come with your instructions all tucked neatly down inside if you're not familiar with using patterns. They are a bit overwhelming to begin with. Take your instructions and lay them aside for right now and open up your pattern pieces. This is a child's outfit, so there's not a lot of pieces here, but there will, usually are at least a couple of these pages. And you'll see this is not fully unfolded. 
This thing is much bigger, okay? Now, now's when you need your instructions. We're gonna be making item G, the little hat, okay? So we're gonna open our pattern pamphlet paper to where it tells us what numbers we need for item G. And they're listed right here. So each, each article of clothing on the pattern corresponds to the numbers, all right? So we're gonna looking for the bow and the knot right now, which is going to be pattern piece 18 and 19, okay? The dress also has a bow and knot, so it might be the same, but it might not. So you'll need to look at that. All right, so I already see right here in front of me, pattern piece 19. So that's one of our pieces. And our other piece is not on this piece of paper. So there's another sheet to the pattern. Let me get it out. All right, because I've already cut this pattern, I cut the pattern for a hat, but I didn't cut the pattern for the bow. I had already separated piece number 18 from this other section of pattern pieces but now I need to get 19 out. So I'm just gonna cut this piece of paper, and this is tissue paper, and it is the thinnest tissue paper you have ever seen, so be aware of that. <laughs> it's not very forgiving. All right, on small pieces like this, you'll notice the they don't have room on there to print all this information that tells about the pattern piece. Now, I cut through that without thinking about it, but if you're really bent on saving your pieces and knowing which piece goes to which pattern and all that stuff. You could either write that information on there yourself or you can take this pattern piece and fold that piece up to that cut line and that way you've got it. It's just folded to the back. Fold it straight, but yeah. So that's a good way. So that's the only two pieces we need for the bow is the knot and the bow, 18 and 19, okay? So I'll move this out of the way. And I've chosen this blue fabric with the daisies on it. I've already cut a hat out of this. Now I just want to cut the bow. So you're going to find your grain line on your pattern piece. Your grain is going to run with your selvages or your edges. And this is the folded edge here, but these edges here are called your selvages. They kind of have a woven finish to them to where they don't ravel that's your selvage edge. So you're gonna to want to make sure that this grain line arrow lines up in a straight line with that grain. I'm not gonna cut it here though. I'm gonna cut it over here on this big chunk of leftover fabric. I'm all about using the fabric I have the most efficient way possible. So I can still place it over here and make sure that it's straight of grain because this is a fabric that has a grain line running through it. It's real subtle, but it's like a seersucker, I believe you call it. And it's got that little bit of a line to it. So I'm gonna line this up. What I'm gonna do to do that is I'm just gonna kind of fold this back out of the way and make sure I'm on that line. Looks good. I'm gonna pin this down. Since this is square, it's gonna be pretty easy to pin, pretty straightforward. We're just gonna put a pin through both layers of fabric at every corner. Now you don't want your pin sticking out into your cut line, so be careful how you place your pin, okay? And this particular piece, I should have read, says that I only need to cut one, and I pinned this to two layers of fabric because most pattern pieces that you're gonna cut, you're gonna cut two. Almost always, unless you're cutting something on a fold, you're gonna cut two of everything. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me another bow I can put on another hat or use for something else later. All right, I'm not gonna fix that right now. I am gonna take this piece, which is pattern piece 19, and it is the knot for the bow, and I'm gonna lay it. 
The straight of grain line on it is here. It also is cut one, but if I'm cutting two of that, I might as well cut two of this. So I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna put this cut line right on top of that cut line, okay? That way I know I'm on straight of grain because I've already lined that one up. You can't do this with everything, but it does save you a little bit of fabric when you can. Again, this is a, a rectangular piece, so four pins is plenty sufficient. This one I might even do less. Yeah, I believe I will because that's gonna hold right there on that line pretty well, especially as narrow as this is. So let's do a pin this direction and then just do a third one down here on this long cut, okay? And push that pin head back in out of your way, but don't distort your fabric to where it's not a straight. This is kind of pushing in a little bit to where it's almost not straight. So you're gonna, these, most patterns that you're gonna cut for clothes are not straight lines. So this, you're very fortunate if you have a rotary cutter, you could do this with that. Um, but I'm just gonna cut this with a pair of scissors and preferably some that are better than those. All right. Okay. I'm going to start here and just cut down that seam. Okay. Now I'm going to cut down this line where I've doubled the pattern up. I'm gonna move this back out of the way so that I can get to this cut. Okay, that one's done. Flip this one back down and I'll cut it. All right, and then this last little bit. Here's our two pieces for our bow. Okay, 18 and 19. That's all there is to cutting a pattern. Most of the time you'll have a lot more pieces. You'll have to figure out which one goes with what, but your instructions are your guide. And I failed to mention one other thing that I should have mentioned. When you open your pattern up, one of the very first things you're gonna come to there's a lot of uh, definitions and and um, what thing what terms mean. It's kind of a glossary up here usually, okay. But then you're going to get into these pictures of fabric with pattern pieces laying on it. For each garment that you could possibly make from this pattern, there's going to be a diagram of how they want you to lay that pattern out. Because depending on the fabric you choose. You might have something like this hat that we, we did previously that has a flower on it that goes, you know, up. It's a directional print. So if you'll follow these instructions on how to lay your pattern pieces out, your directional prints should line up right. You can always check that if you'll think about where the piece goes on the garment that you're making and make sure that it's lining up right. But that's what these all these drawings are on there for. And for our cutting needs, the hat is the very last thing. So you need to come over here to these drawings. All right, so we're gonna take these two pieces and uh, unpin them. This bow really couldn't get much simpler. Okay, I'm gonna put my, try to make a habit of putting your pattern pieces back with your pattern. I just go ahead and slide them in my envelope right off the bat because as you've noticed, things around here kind of get out of place sometimes and mislaid and I lose things. So, all right, so we only needed one layer of this fabric for this bow. And the same thing with the knot. We only need one layer. So separated that. So I could make two bows out of this if I wanted to. Now, the instructions say to fold this in half, right sides together. 
And if you'll look, it's, it's exactly the same size on both sides, or it looks to me, visually, it looks like it is. So I wouldn't worry too much about which side. So they're, they're the same either way. Since I do have a grain line running through this, I would probably fold it with the grain rather than against it. Um, the sear sucker kind of has a, uh, a line that runs through it. All right, you're gonna match all your sides and you're gonna pin this. I'm gonna use a pin near this fold just to make that lay flat. Okay. I'm gonna go pin right here in the middle of this. Use as many pins as you need. Pins are your extra hands when you're sewing. So, use the tools that you have. All right, one more pin right here. Now, the instructions are to sew this all the way around except for leaving an opening to turn it. Now on our little hat, we left a very large opening because we had to get the whole hat through it. But on this, you don't have very much that you're gonna turn. So what I would do is, I'm gonna get, grab another pin. I would leave about a two inch opening from about right there to about right there, something like that. I will sew, I'll start here, so all the way to here, over to here and back stitch. Then I'll start here and back stitch, go all the way to here, pivot, come off. Then what you'll do, once you've got that done, you'll turn this inside out and press it. And you're gonna be putting that knot right over that spot that you've left open. So in all reality, there's not a whole lot of need to hand stitch this close, especially on something like this. All right. So let me get set up at the machine and we'll sew this piece. Okay, so I've got our bow piece pinned and ready to sew. And I'm gonna pin our knot piece now. I've got right sides out. I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna pin here at this end and at this end. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna sew down through there you're going to make a tube on this piece. So both these seams will be five eighths of an inch, just like normal sewing. And I'm going to start with this piece. I'm going to start right here on this end. So all the way down, back stitch at both ends. ready to go. Now again on this piece I'm going to take and sew around to here and down to this pin. Then I'm going to stop. I'll start at this pin and I'll go around and back. And I'll back stitch anytime I start or stop. gotten to the corner and I'm going to need to pivot so I'm going to make sure that my needle is down. I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'll pivot this. Now if you realize you're lined up wrong and you're not on five eighths of an inch, pivot it back, stitch over to where the five eighths of an inch lines up, and then pivot. I've done this for a long time so I'm right there on five eighths. Now I'm going to drop my presser bar and I'm gonna continue sewing the seam. Right up to that pin, I'm about three stitches away. And then I'm gonna back stitch. Okay. Remember, we didn't wanna sew that all the way across right here because we want to be able to turn this inside out. So I'm gonna cut those threads and then I'm gonna start a pin. Now I'm gonna go over to this other pin and let my presser foot down on top of the pin, then pull it out. That way I'll start right where I wanted to. Again, back stitch anywhere you start and stop. 
I'm going to head down to this corner. Again, stopping with the needle in the fabric. Lift the presser foot, pivot, put the presser foot back down and sew to the end. Okay, so that's got our bow completely sewn as far as machine sewing goes. All right, now on this piece, you'll see I got some little knotted up, ratted out threads there. I'm going to pick those out so that I can trim those off so that they don't file with me later on. All right. All right. So now what you're going to do is turn this piece inside out. <laughs> and that is easier said than done with something this small and this narrow. They make a little tool called the bodkin. Okay. I'm back with my bodkin. Mine's had a rough life. It's a little bit misshaped, but it works really well. It's one of the cheapest little sewing tools you'll ever buy, two, three dollars. It's got a little ring down here at the bottom and you'll push that ring up here in a little bit and it'll pinch that tight. So I'll show you how this works. We're gonna stick it through this tube because it is very short. And again, I'm gonna catch between those two little jaws, they have little teeth on them. And I'm gonna catch the edge of this fabric right in between those two little jaws. And this is hard to see what I'm doing, but I've pinched that between those jaws. Now I'm gonna take this little ring down here, I'm gonna slide it up this little shaft. And turning it upside down will help with that because gravity will help me there, okay? So I'm gonna work that up that shaft until that pinches that tight. Okay, and that is tight up there, okay? Now, if I've done this right, I'm gonna just take this little fabric and scoot it over where that fabric is locked up tight in those jaws. Once you do this a couple times, you'll figure out how to pinch and pull all that fabric to get it to do what you want it to do. All right, so there is your little turned tube. And we'll just continue to work that out around the edge. There's that seam. Okay, and there's the little thing just pinched on there with that ring pushed up there really tight. Okay, now we're gonna move the ring back and unpinch the jaws and then just take that and flatten that out, fiddle that out and get that out flat, okay? Now before I go on any further with this, I will take it to the ironing board and press this nice and flat. And you're gonna wanna move that seam to the middle of this. Okay, so whatever you need to do to line that up in the middle. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap this around the bow. So you want the seam hidden. So we're gonna move it to the middle and press this like this. For this other piece, we're going to take, we've already sewn it, we've left a gap where we can turn it. We still got some threads to turn. We're gonna take and clip our corners. This is a technique to remove bulk. And when you clip a corner, you never want to get down close to your stitching. You want to clip about an eighth to a quarter away from your stitching. Now, if you've got a really bulky, tight thing, you can do it a little closer. And I like to do it like that if I've got a big, bulky piece of fabric I'm working with. But this is really lightweight, and it's really not even necessary that we clip the corners, but it'll just lay a little flatter if we do. So I'm gonna clip both those corners. You can do these. There's not as much bulk here either way. It's just personal choice, up to you. And got some more threads I forgot to trim right there. So let me get that out of the way. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna take this opening that we left, separate the two pieces of fabric, and we're gonna take our thumbs and just kind of push the rest of the fabric through that opening. It just takes a little time and finesse to get this to go through there. All right, then we're gonna work it out. I've got all of it inside, so it's right side on both. Okay, so we're gonna take and work it out. I start with my fingers. 
I work as much out as I can get with my fingers, if I can get them in there. And I've got fat fingers, so sometimes it's difficult, but I'll just keep working each corner out, okay? Now, once you get to this point, you'll want to take something flat. Like I said, these scissors don't have much of a point to them, so they're pretty good to do this with. But you could also use a skewer, not a real sharp one, but a, a, a nail stick, a cuticle stick is probably the best thing I've used lately. And just work these points out. And this one here, see how that's hiding down in there? That's that bulk from that extra fabric that won't let it move out. So now, now we've got a good point on that. See, that's what you want. You wanna work your points back out because right now your corners are a little rounded. So that's what you're doing here. If you use a skewer that is too sharp, it'll come through the fabric if you're not careful. So that's why the nail stick seems to be so useful. Now, this one here, I've still got a little bit of a corner there that doesn't want to come out. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to fix that with a straight pin. I just take my straight pin and pick that out. Just put it in there and pull a little bit. Just a little tug, but make sure you catch four or five threads and it'll pull it out. And then just roll the things with your fingers. Get everything out nice and flat and smooth. Then you've got this opening here, okay? You're gonna take this and finger press it with your thumbnail, okay? Just to kind of get it to lay down flat. Then I will take both these pieces to the iron, iron them. Okay, I'm taking these both to the ironing board, iron them nice and flat, okay? You still got this opening here where you turn this, all right? Like I said, this is gonna be covered by this knot, but it's not gonna cover all of it. So you've got a couple of choices. You can slip stitch that closed, you can do nothing, just leave it alone. It's not gonna show up much, even if it does bulge open a little bit. Or you can do a decorative stitch or just a straight stitch all the way around the edge to catch that and close it. And that's what I've chosen to do. I've also done one more thing that the pattern doesn't tell you on the instructions. When I ironed this little knot piece flat, I ironed up about a quarter of an inch fold there. That'll help us out later. I'll show you why, just a little bit. So right now I'm gonna set up to stitch around the edges of this fabric. And since I'm gonna do that on this piece, I believe I'm also gonna do it on the knot. You'll just look cute that they're the same. So for this stitch, we're gonna just stitch right along the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna start at a corner and I'm just going a couple of threads in from the edge, less than an eighth probably, probably just whatever, this is a really small piece, or nearly when you top stitch something, which is what I'm gonna do here, you top stitch it about a quarter of an inch in. For most garments, that looks pretty good. For this, it being so small, it doesn't really matter. And if I do a quarter of an inch in, I'm afraid it'll look a little strange, so. get to the corner, leave the needle down, pivot the fabric, continue on around. Okay, same thing, another corner, leave the needle down or turn it down, pivot the fabric, continue on around. stitch there, so I made another stitch. I'm going to turn that corner. Come back to where I started. I'm going to pivot this, I'm going to put that needle back down where I started and pivot again because I did not back stitch when I took off. So to lock these stitches, I need to back stitch somewhere. So I'm going to pivot that fabric and back stitch right there where I started. And my machine has chosen right now to fight with me. So, all right, so we've got that. We've got that back stitched. And that's what that looks like with the top stitch. Okay. Now you're going to take that little knot and put it right in the center there. 
So the knot, I'm going to do that same back stitching on, but I'm going to go ahead and fold that little piece down and I'm going to stitch it down flat. So. This time I'm not going to go all the way around the piece. I'm just going to sew up one side, cut the threads, turn, sew down the other side. didn't back stitch. You'll see why in a minute. Okay. Now I've got quite a few threads to trim here, so let me trim my threads and I'll show you what we've got here. wad it up just a little bit on me. If you were doing regular sewing, you would want to stop right now and undo this. But the way this bow is made, that's going to get turned under. So no one will ever know that that is like that because you're going to do that right there with it. Okay. So I'm not worried too much about it. Give it a little tug, see if it'll come out on its own. If not, not going to worry about it. So now you're going to take your little bow, whichever side you like the best, put it up and take your fingers, find the middle, which you can do that easily by folding it in half, and then just kind of finger pressing that little, that little bit of a line there, then you'll know where the middle is. And if you're really particular about things, or if you were working with a bigger bow, I probably would run a, a little bit of thread through there, you know, just stitch down through there so that you could pull this up tight before you go to put this on there, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to take this now. See, we've got one end that's finished because I sewed that down, okay, and one that's not. So we're going to take that and just kind of lay it in the middle of the bow. Let's stand up so I can do this a little bit better. Then we'll flip it over and we'll take this raw edge and put it down at the bottom of the bow, okay. Then we'll take this other edge and fold it up to the top. You just don't want it to show. Now, you're going to take and pin that right there. And you want your pin to go all the way through the fabric on the back, but also the bow, because you don't want the bow moving while you slip stitch this, okay? So I've pinned all the way through the fabric and the bow. The knot will not slide, okay? Now, all you've got to do is slip stitch this closed and when you do that you're going to want to catch the bow as you go through so just take a couple of stitches you could also if you want to do this on the machine just with some tacking but I'm just going to slip stitch this closed right quick and then attach it to the hat now I don't have the blue hat I have the red hat but if you were attaching it to the hat at the very same time you're slip stitching this closed that I would just take it right then and just sew it. And in this pattern, it suggested it be on that seam, so it's at the back of the hat. If you want to put it on the front, by all means, do that. It's your hat. Do it the way you want to. But you just take it and stitch it, slip stitch here, and then slip stitch at the top, and you're all done. Again, this was McCall's 7342.